Welcome, Hiller fans, to Chick Welsh Field, Dave Hughes Stadium, where tonight, November 4th, 2017, your Hopkins and Hillers will take on the Dartmouth Indians. Hi, I'm Rick DeSena in the booth with Dandy Don Lehman. Don, game two of the playoffs, Division Four South semifinal here tonight. Uh, what are you thinking? You know, I, I'm thinking I'm just happy to be part of this, Rick. <laughs> I mean, you know, we've watched a lot of Hiller football over the years, and every year is different, every team's different, but... Um, this is this is the biggest game I've watched here. Yeah, it's the mean, biggest game that I've watched um, the Hillers play. And, you know, I wasn't. I guess I was around in 2005, but I didn't necessarily watch. The, you know, the, I didn't see the Super what Bowl was, run. What was going on? Sure. But I'll tell you, this is this is big time now, and uh, it's a big time opponent, and this is some excitement here. Yeah. So you, you touched upon it. We're in uncharted territories for hopping in football under the new system. Second game semifinals they won the first one they did that in 2013 but this hosting a game here is uncharted and uh, obviously we wish the Hillers luck tonight's opponent is the Dartmouth Indians led by head coach Rick White who's got over 100 career victories in his coaching uh, at uh, Dartmouth uh, the Indians uh, have a tremendous um, uh, uh, tradition going on with the coach himself who's a two-time Super Bowl winner and his team has he's led his team to two Super Bowls as well. So they, they have some pedigree. They hear, I know their record's only, you know, four and four. They came into the playoffs three and four, but another team to look out for. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's unknown for us. You know, that's the thing. I mean, you know, we're out of the TVL here. Um, I had to Google Dartmouth, to be honest with you, to find <laughs> out where they where, where it actually was. Um, a coastal town down in the <laughs> south. I, oh, my God, it looks actually very pretty and a lot of affluent people down there, actually. Um, but, you know, we don't know a lot about them. But, again, you had mentioned the pedigree, Rick. Whenever you have a program that's gone, you know, to Gillette, they've been down there a couple of times. Um, you know, these kids, and what was last year? It was 2013, I think, that they were there. Uh, they were there 14 and 15. 14 and 15. So there might have been there were some kids that were on that team. So they know what that's about. And they, um, you know, once you have that feeling and that big game experience, that's something that you can't coach. And that's something that Hopkins does not have. So that puts us in a disadvantage right off the bat. We'll see if we can respond. Uh, you know, this team, the Hopkinton team is a senior-laden team. Um, they've overcome really every obstacle that has been thrown at them. And I've got all the confidence in the world in these boys tonight. Yeah, and uh, they're separating right now from the coin toss. Dartmouth is going to receive. I don't know who. I'm guessing maybe Hopkinton won a deferred. But uh, before we get into it, we can recap a little bit of last week. We won 13 to nothing. Uh, not quite the game we had anticipated where Pembroke just had no offense. Um, our offense sputtered a little bit. We had a 0-0 game at halftime. Ultimately, we ended up scoring two touchdowns in the second half, but quite, not quite as pretty as we probably would like. No, I think when you looked at both records last week, you would think that it was going to be a blowout on Hopkinton's side. Pembroke, to their credit, they came up here. They were ready to play. Um, their defense was very stout. Their offense, not so much. So we'll see what this um, Dartmouth team has. Uh, and as far as if they can, uh, you know, put a challenge to the Hillers tonight, the undefeated Hillers. All right, right after the, right after the national anthem, we'll be back to uh, bring you the game. Taunting, trash talking, the berating of players, coaches, and officials. Please respect fans, coaches, participants, and opponents alike. Thank you for helping create a positive, respectful, and fun environment here at HHS. Now, please direct your attention to the north end zone as we honor our flag for the playing of the national anthem. <laughs>
Good luck. Go Hillen. Well done. No band tonight, but the student section did the best they could to get it going. You know, we have a beautiful night here for football. It was rather warm here tonight, uh, today, actually. <laughs> like and, 70. Uh, it was 75 degrees today uh, at its peak. Uh, it's probably in the low 60s right now. So this is very nice weather for November 4th uh, to get this rolling. So let's talk about last week. To continue with last week, we had a couple of players of the week. Uh, his big performance last week was Connor Hebert, named Boston Herald Star of the Week. We've seen him now uh, two weeks in a row have solid game defensively, but also being able to run the ball. And Mike Gianelli, who stood out to us last week as well, was the Metro West Defensive Player of the Crown, Defensive Player of the Week Crown Trophy winner. Uh, he had an outstanding game, and he got into it early, as we remember him getting getting hit and dishing it out it, early in the game. Yeah, he got physical right off the bat. Uh, Michael did, and you know Connor's been a big part of this program for all three years he's played here. So both both boys are important players. Con, uh, Michael is a little banged up tonight. He's got a thumb thing. Um, so we may not think see him on offense, but uh, you know he, he his real contributions are on defense. He's he's a hitter. So the kick is underway, and it's number 29. Hunter, he's on his feet to about the 23 yard line. Hunter Pimentel on the carry or on the return up to the 23, 24 yard line. Yeah, Brendan Kelly's been kicking well all year. He uh, kind of grounded that down there a little bit. That, that was a good field it, uh, by the Dartmouth player there. Took it up. Hopkinton pretty much plays their whole defense on on kickoff coverage. If you watch that, Rick, they don't right. they don't play a lot of you know a lot of second teamers. They put their their, their D out there and they usually cover the kickoffs pretty well. So he, I missed spot. It's at the 27 yard line. It's a looks like a almost a a pistol kind of uh, triple option, and it's straight ahead. I didn't see the number, but he picked up about two on the play. It looked like the Hopkinton defense. It looks like, he did he get two? Yeah, I mean, I guess he got two on that. Um, the defensive line held their own. You got Cal Cousins over on the left, number 51. You've got uh, number uh, 52, um, Alex McDonald. You've got uh, both Brown boys, number 24 and number 45. You've got Luke Deloya over here at cornerback. Pretty much same cast of characters we've been looking at all year. And he gives it to the straight man straight ahead, and he picks up about uh, another four on the play, so it'll bring up about third and three. Now, what the scouting report to these guys, they have a lefty quarterback. They're going to try and pound it away. It doesn't uh, – I'm not sure if they're going to try and pound it as much as, <laughs> as Pembroke did last week, but hopefully, um, you know, the Hiller defense is up to the task. I mean, when you get – as you go in the playoffs, things are going to get more physical and you're going to have to step up. And, and this is a big third down. It's a great time to start right now. Yeah, and you can hear the student section getting into it. The, the sophomore quarterback, Nolan Ellis, taking over for his brother Nate, who was injured earlier in the season. He's in the shotgun. He hands it. No, he keeps it. And he's going right, and he's not going to get it. He's stuffed. A loss of about two on the play. You know, it's hard to see who that was, but I think that that was Kyle Cousins who came off his block. It also could have been Farina. It's tough to see, but, you know, this Hiller team, and they're, they are so quick. Every one of these kids can pursue to the ball, and right there was a perfect example. It looked like it was blocked. They tried to bounce it outside, and there was no go on the Hiller defense. And the snap, and uh, the punt is away. It's not not a great kick. It's away from, but it bounces to Abbott, and he picks it up, and he gets nowhere. He's down at the 30-yard line, tackled by number 88. Now that was that was a nice punt. Um, you know, Will it bounced a couple times, and uh, Will got what he could with it. That was good coverage by Dartmouth. So the Hillers have the going to start their first drive here at the 30-yard line. It's going to be interesting to see, Rick, with this offense because we've seen a little bit of everything with these guys. First it was 40 points, 40 points, bomb, bomb, bomb. Last week, they, you know, they kind of grinded it out a little bit. We're bouncing it out, and then the, in the second half, they ran between the tackles. So it's going to be interesting to see what we see here with uh, the Hiller offense. So they got a tight formation, and Spin Abbott gets has the ball and gets nowhere. He 
was uh, tackled by a, a lineman who had penetrated, and I can't see the number. I called the wrong number on the tackle for the uh, kickoff. Uh, there was no 88 on the roster, so these are tough numbers to see. Well, I, I, I'm not sure who who it was, but it came from the right side of the defensive line, and I'm not sure if our guard was pulling, but he was. It was it was blown up by the defensive line of of of, um, of uh, Dartmouth. Let's put it that way. All right. So it more traditional set. And he's throwing out here to Abbott, and he's going to get closed in on pretty quickly. And number 17 makes the tackle. Number 17, Dane Ashton, a senior captain. Yeah, Will just kind of uh, ran out here, turned around. That was a good hard throw by Kelleher. Um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see. If you look at that defensive line from Dartmouth, they um, they look like they have some size out there. 75 looks like a good size kid, 74. So, you know, that's been one thing about the Hiller offensive line is the size. They can certainly pass block, and they, they've got excellent technique. We're gonna, it's going to be interesting to see if they can move these kids off the ball. So they got third and 12, roughly, and uh, two wide receivers to each side. Kelleher in the shotgun. And he's flushed out. He's flushed out. He's going to – he's throwing. And I don't know uh, – we have a catch, it looks oh like. Oh, yeah. He's got to catch uh, Abbott coming back to the ball. Catches it, lands his feet, pushed out of bounds. At about the 45-yard, the 43-yard line. That's just a great throw. Great throw, great catch, great concentration. I mean, he was covered. He, I mean, Kelleher threw it the only spot it could be thrown. And Will, with excellent concentration, saw it in, gathered it, got a foot down, and that was the catch. Yeah, it, it helped coming back to the ball, too. You don't let, let him sit out there and – so here we go, it's a straight up handoff to Ebert and nothing going, he swallowed up maybe a loss of one. Hey, you're looking at 75 here on the um, left defensive line, he kind of crashed down. Uh, looked like it was off of a slant or something, he just looked like he knew where he was going. I want to file that away and trying to run something off of that because he, he wasn't holding his gap, he just literally slammed it in and blew that play up. So it's second and 10. The Hillers with uh, two receivers to the left, two to the right. Kill her back. He throws over the middle, and he's got Linquist for a pickup of about five on the play. It'll be third and five at the 49-yard line. Hillers can play it any way you want. You want to throw it over the top and throw some bombs. So they can do that. You want to play the short game and kind of dump it to Lindquist. And, well, you know, actually I said I and Ellie was big on the defense. He added to the offense a lot. Oh, he's and he's little. Catch. He has. You know, we've got him down for uh, – Ian Ellie had 20 catches, 213 yards. Yeah, so he's, he's yeah they're going to miss him on offense. You got Luke Deloya is going to step it up. You got to throw again. He's back. He's flushed again. Oh. And he stays, and he's going to – I see a flag on the play. There's a flag. He got the first down, but a flag sitting on the 46-yard line. Let's see what it is. You're going to say it's either going to be a hold on Hopkinton no. or maybe some sort of illegal hands to the face or something on defense. They seem to be heading backwards, so I don't know. Yeah. No, he's picking it no. up. It's All right, a, good. No, uh, no penalty on the play, so it becomes a first down. And the Hill is across the, the midfield stripe. They sit at the Dartmouth 44-yard, 43-yard line, where it will be first and 10. You know, something that you lose uh, sight of with Kelleher is he can move with the ball. You know, he can run. And uh, it's, they don't have a lot of designed runs for him, but if, you know, the play's not open, he's not afraid to, to tuck it and run with it. And he's, he's athletic enough to get some yards. He's uh, Zach Frank straight up the middle. Is that Frank or is that Connor Ebert? I think it was Connor Ebert. Connor Ebert straight up the middle. He picked up about three or four on the play. Now, it's going to be interesting here, um, again, with the size difference. But, you know, these Hiller linemen, they fire off, Rick. I mean, you, you watch them, their backs are flat. They've got good technique. You know, you watch. It doesn't matter what size you are. It matters what kind of technique and and how physical you are. It trips to the right, and wide open was, I don't know, it was Linquist down to the 28-yard line. Just turned and curled, and he drilled him right in the number. 
Yeah, Link was caught that ball. That was just, you know, that quick action uh, kind of just went out about seven yards, turned around, and the, the kid tackled him, but he didn't seem to be too happy about having to tackle him one-on-one because -on -one, you know, Link was a pretty tough kid there. So he got uh, first and 10 at the 20, 28 yard line, 20. He's throwing, he's throwing, he's looking, he's looking, he's coming up the field, and he's swallowed up by number 74, Jack Diaz. Yeah, he was looking uh, He was looking for Deloya in the corner there, and uh, they had two guys back there. The Dartmouth had good coverage, and uh, this number 74 kind of scraped off his block and made an easy sack at Keller. So maybe a sack, maybe not. It's right at the line of scrimmage. Second and 10. This drive started at the 30-yard line. Now with... 4-11 to go in the first quarter. A pretty sizable drive going. Three first downs. And he's rolling right. And he's got, he has uh, Abbott. Abbott. Abbott out of bounds at the, going to be close to a first down, if not a first down. That has been a play, a bread and butter play for the, for the Hillers all year. Um, it's something that Kelleher does well. He rolls out well. He moves with the ball well. He's accurate throwing the ball. And they run that quick little four-yard out. It's almost automatic yardage every time. Yeah, that was a uh, about a six-yard gain. So it's third and four from the 21-yard line. And they got three backs in the backfield. Oh, yeah, unusual. Pony Express, baby. And it's pitched to Abbott, and Abbott's going nowhere. He lost about two on the play, maybe. So it's going to be fourth and about. I mean, this is the four down territory for sure. So now that's it's a going to bring about fourth and eight, John. Sorry, Rick. That was a uh, that was a formation that we have not seen all year. We have seen that formation in the past out of this offense. Um, that's the first time that I've seen it where you had Frank and. Um, uh, Hebert in there at the same time, and then they threw Abbott in there as the uh, so-called Pony Express. Um, <laughs> there was only two backs, though, wasn't it? Well, <laughs> yeah, you know, just Craig James and, and Eric, uh, Dickerson. Eric, Dickerson. Eric Dickerson. Well, I guess it's the wishbone. Is it the wishbone? The wishbone is more, but they usually That's, separate yeah, a little yeah, bit. It's more so we action. got the, a trip stack right and a timeout. Hawkington. Let's see what they can do, but they had a trip stack to the right. Well, fourth and seven, and we're you know we're out of field goal range right here. So um, you know we'll see what Coach Sully dials up. He's having a last second conversation here with uh, with Ryan, and you know I, really one of those just little turnarounds to to Lindquist or maybe an out to Abbott. I, you know this offense can get seven yards. Oh no doubt, no doubt, and it's uh, it, it, yeah. You don't know if they're going to go to the short side where the where the three receivers were, or they're going to go to Cooney out one on one with number 17, Dane Ashton. So Linquist is in the slot, and he's coming into the middle of the field. He's got Abbott deep, and it's too long. He missed him in the back of the end zone. So the Hills will turn o turn over the ball on downs at the 25, 27 yard line. Yeah, it looked like he had him there. Um, it, Ryan had some pressure on him right at the end. Uh, they had good blocking, but then, you know, a guy kind of got loose at the end. Ryan looked like he threw it, kind of turned as he threw it. Just overthrew it by, you know, by a couple inches. That well, was, that he, was had close. A he had a defender in the trail technique, and he couldn't throw it. He had to throw it long. So the Indians are, are spread. Jet sweep motion, and it's thrown, and it's tipped, oh, and it's that. tipped, and it's tipped, and it's not caught. Ionelli, the one-handed man, couldn't get that left hand out there on the ball. Yeah, Ryan Brown, I believe, is the one who tipped it coming from his right outside linebacker spot. This quarterback, uh, the sophomore lefty, does not look very tall, um, so that looked like something that has been spoken about all week with the Hillers, and I wouldn't be surprised to see these kids jumping all night because this, this kid looks like he's... The easy He's on small. him. He's small. I don't want Come on now. <laughs> Come on. He's in the shotgun. And he hands off to nothing going to number 16, Luke Tisdale. Picked up maybe a yard. 
Yeah, you had Matt Brown in there. You had uh, Anthony Farina. Um, Ian Ellie always comes in and gives a stick, even if he doesn't, <laughs> even if he doesn't need to. He always reminds people that he's there. And uh, here, you know, this is another. You know, this is a big third down here early in the game. All right, so we'll set it up here. We got uh, two, two backs in the backfield with the quarterback, Nolan Ellis, in the shotgun. A short drop, and he's going to take off. He throws across the middle, and no, oh, I don't know if he, no, I didn't think he caught it. Deloya made a nice, a nice effort to come back and try to catch that, but the ball did hit the ground. Yeah, yeah, Luke kind of turned his body to grab that. He was, that was lucky there because it looked like that receiver was breaking out and could have gotten open there. Um, but that was not a good throw by the Dartmouth quarterback, and it was a good job by Luke to almost intercept it and set him up with a, uh, set him up with 205 getting the ball back. Let's see if they can, let's see if they can um, field the punt. Fourth and eight, and there's the punt. And it's a high punt, and it's not very long, but and that's a good fair catch right there. Abbott takes the fair catch at the 42 yard, uh, 41 yard line of the Hillers, and that takes their second possession at the 41 yard line. I mean, we kind of saw this last week with the punting, and you know, not you know, I guess that was the way that Pembroke punted, and, you know, let it bounce and roll, and you know, we don't want to see that. That was a that was kind of punted in the traffic. Abbott came up, fielded it very cleanly in traffic on the on the fair catch and uh, and not let it go any further. So we got good field position here. So they're first and ten, two receivers to each side. Kelleher in the shotgun, and a little quick, and he threw it to Abbott, but he missed him. That was a forward pass, though. They're not really calling it? There we go. The refs aren't doing nobody's, anything. Nobody's really that, doing well, anything. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's what worries me because it should yeah, be called it incomplete. Yeah, okay, there we that, go. That was going forward. We're, we're, we're not right on the line, but we were pretty close. It, it definitely was, but the refs, nobody was calling it. You got to call that incomplete right off the bat. You know, it's, you know, you can't stand there. So it's second and ten on the incomplete pass with 146 to go in the first quarter. That looked like Ryan saw something there that made him throw it quicker than he normally would. It looked like an almost an uncomfortable throw. Hmm. We got uh, three right, three receivers to the right with Linquist tight in an H back formation. Kelleher hands off to Zach Ryan, uh, Zach Frank. I'm sorry. And that's. Uh, about third and ten on the play. Didn't really pick up anything. Now both defensive ends for um, for Dartmouth were crashing on that number seventy-five, and I can't see on the other side fifty, sixty-two maybe. Uh, sixty-two being Danny Good. Yeah, they both um, and could actually it could have been number twenty. You now I'm looking at who knows, but they, they both crashed in. Hillers didn't have any chance on that. Hebert had no chance, or Frank or whoever ran it had no chance. So we got a lot of, we got double tight end on. Empty backfield. Empty, but LSC three receivers, so they got to be in a yeah. double tight end situation. The lawyer's coming across the middle. He's throwing deep time. down the field. It's going to be, oh, who was that? That was Luke. Luke DeLoya had it in his hands, but he had to get up to get it and dropped it at about the 35 yard line. Yeah, it was you know it was, it was great coverage there. So uh, I mean, I'm sorry, great um, pass blocking. Ryan had a lot of time. Luke kind of found a soft spot right inside the zone there. It was thrown a little behind him. I think you throw that pass to Deloya ten times, he catches it nine. Okay. So that was a tough. That was a tough one. Well, on the play, it's fourth down. Kelly on the kick and it's Ooh. blocked. He had it blocked and he recovers. It's recovered at the 27 yard line of the Hillers. A breakdown that came right up the middle, Dawn. Not exactly sure how that uh, that happened. I, I didn't see where it came from either, Rick. But, yeah, you're right. It came between the tackles. And, um, you know, that Brendan really had no chance. You almost have to have some, you know, where about you there to maybe pull that back in and, and instead of even trying to kick that. But, nevertheless, it's a big block here for Dartmouth. And, you know, close games, this is the kind of things that can kind of turn the table. It can. And now, we haven't seen Dartmouth being able to throw the ball much, so uh, the short field probably helps them if they're going to try to pound it. So they're in that 
uh, three backs in the shotgun with the quarterback. And it's straight. Oh, he, he fumbled the ball. Tisdale fumbled the ball. Don, I'm not, it didn't even look like he was hit. It almost looked like he was just kind of. It was an exchange. It was in the exchange. He like uh, The quarterback put it in his gut. He grabbed it, dropped it, and um, that's a huge play right there. Yeah, huge so play. The, so the Hillers will take over at the 27-yard 27 27 line as well. So the, you look out here in the, uh, on the stands, we got a lot, of, a lot of people starting to fill in now. <laughs> I'm getting heckled here. Yeah, right? that's getting a, heckled. you're getting sign language heckled. So Keller hands off to e that's uh, Ebert, and he some tough yards. He picks up about seven on the play out to about the 35-yard line. Yeah, Alex McDonald made a nice block on that. He kind of turned number 75, and there was a, a nice alley for Hebert to, to, to work it up there and get about seven yards. So it's going to be oh, yeah. second and uh, – Second and three, and that will should do it for the first quarter. It looks like the Hillers are going to let the clock run down. Yeah, crowd is filled in very well here, Rick. Um, yeah, you look right no left. There's no band, and, but, but it's, 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 it's pretty packed. And Dartmouth side has got a pretty good uh, amount of people. That doesn't look like there's too many students over there. It's, it's a long trip. That's probably one of, the, uh, one of the negatives to having the playoff system the way it is. You have to travel a pretty good distance to play teams, and the visiting team uh, often won't have the crowd uh, be able to travel with them. Yeah, and, and, you know, I know that Hopkinton, I don't know how other schools handle it, but here at Hopkinton, if there's a big playoff game, whether it's in you know, volleyball or wherever, they will, you know, get a fan bus. Yeah. That's, um, that's always something that's good. It's always nice to have the kids there. And good news is, is our kids are here because we're at home and because <laughs> we're undefeated. So. That's right. So uh, while we're at the break of the quarter, we have Tom Dings, our director, working things as he normally does here in the booth. We got our camera folks upstairs, John Ritz working the camera, Denise Antaki working the camera, and Mr. Everything, our producer, Mike Terosian. Lord knows where he, he is today. He's everywhere. Right now. Terosian's but everywhere. He was on the mic last week. He was out in the field one week, one time. He's doing everything on a camera. We know Mr. Everything, Mike Terosian, will take care of business after the broadcast. <laughs> It's a beautiful night here. Have we had nicer weather <laughs> in a football season, Rick? No. I mean, uh, it's it's crazy. No. Every night is more beautiful than the than the one before it. Okay, so we have second and about three. Keller rolling, rolling to his right, and he dumps it, and it's caught by Abbott, and he's saying no, not caught by Abbott. It'll bring up third and about three. I mean, Abbott has really perfected that sideline catch, I'll tell you that much. Um, and, uh, of course, we can't comment from here because it looked like he was in from here, but who knows. Well, the official was pretty emphatic coming yeah. down the line, so nobody's really giving him any grief. No, if John Cook was over there holding the sticks, <laughs> believe me, they'd be getting grief. Him and Kim Donahue, they'd be getting grief. Uh, John Ryan, all John the old Ryan. guys doing oh, yeah. the sticks. I used to be part of that change yep, yep, years ago. Yep, I know you did. And quick pass to Lindquist, and he breaks one tackle, gets out to the 45-yard line, where it'll be first and 10 for the Hillers. That seems to be open. Uh, you know, Lindquist just kind of runs about seven yards, turns around. Kelleher sees him, throws it accurately, and that, that's a no-brainer. Yeah, so that uh, they pick up the first down on the, on the quick pass. Lindquist has been lining up the last few games in the, in the H-back formation just off the tackle. And a quick pass to Deloya, and he's going nowhere. He loses maybe a yard, so it's going to be about second and 11. That was a swing pass. Uh, looked like trying to set up a little bubble screen. The um, number 34, I believe, from Dartmouth came in there and made a nice tackle. Luke didn't have really a shot to do anything with that. Yeah, number 34, Ben Aronson, who certainly came up to make sure nothing would uh, happen after he caught the ball. So we have second and 11 with 10 Minutes on the nose in the second quarter. Kelleher with three receivers to his left, and he's in the shotgun. And he's looking, he's looking. Now he's flushed out. Nope, he's going to come back up the middle. He's going to take off. 
And he's going to be about two, maybe three yards short of the first down. And it depends where it looks like he's giving us an okay spot, Rick. Um, you know, Kelleher had time there. They're not playing a too deep safety. They do have one kid back. Looked like he was kind of shading over more towards Cooney's side that time. Um, they had him covered, and, you know, Ryan did the right thing by grabbing it and running with it and getting some positive yardage. So that brings up third and two on the run by Kelleher. And he's got uh, three receivers to the left with Cooney to the right. Frank, his protector in the back. And he throws, and he's got Abbott down low, and he's got a first down. No, he dropped it. The official saying he dropped it. Mm. He was going away from us, Don, so I didn't, I couldn't really tell, but uh, uh, Abbott doesn't really seem to be complaining. Looks kind of almost mad at himself, so it probably was dropped. Yeah, I mean, it looked like it was a um, an easy completion there. You know, Ryan had the time. Um, Abbott ran a nice route kind of sliding which you know you want to do there if it's a low pass and uh look like uh, will wasn't able to handle it so kelly on the on the kick and he gets a, a good kick off and he's going to let it go and it's going to make it into the end zone Man. unfortunate it just got into the end zone a yard or two deep yeah that's that's a tough one right there because you know i, I actually I, I was thinking that coach might have gone for that there it was only fourth and three you were in their territory it's so, certainly something to consider Hopkinton did not consider it. They went right to the punt. You got to try and pin them back there. You know, you don't want to give it to them on the 20. So um, that was an unfortunate uh, situation there. And uh, now Dartmouth uh, made their stop, and now they have the ball. We'll see if they can do anything with the offense. So they split two to the right, one to the left. Nolan Ellis in the shotgun. And it's a handoff to Tisdale who goes straight up the middle, and he picks up about four yards. Yeah, Dartmouth's offensive line looks like they've, uh, they also can fire off. They got a nice little push there. They're averaging three or four yards a carry here early on, and, and that'll do the job. So the Hillers, looks like their linebackers are going to have to step up a little bit. And, um, you know, I'm not real worried about how they can pass here, but we don't want to let Dartmouth um, establish a line of scrimmage at all. No, no. So we have, uh, he picked up about four in the play, second and six. Ellis in the shotgun, Tisdale in motion, and he hands it to him on the jet sweep, and he dips in, dips out, and loses about four on the play, maybe three on the play. Going side to side on the Hiller defense is not normally a recipe for success just because of the speed. They normally, you know, they hold the edge very well. Their ends come up. Um, that's not really going to work. You almost want to kind of try and go right at them. So that brings up uh, third and about eight from the 22-yard line. Tisdale behind Ellis. Two receivers to the right. And he's going to throw, and he throws it up, and he's got... Too high, intended for number 10, David Albono Al Al Winra, something like that. I'm not exactly sure. Oh, that's I hope I didn't butcher his name too bad. That's why you get the roster, Rick, and <laughs> I, just, I just do whatever it is that I do. <laughs> but they, um, you know, that, that quarterback kind of threw it off his back foot there. He was open. That number 10 was open there. And um, that quarterback just kind of, he was pressured a little bit. Looked like he just winged it. Yeah. So we get the we get the punt and not a very long punt and it's going oh, it gets a good roll though and it's going to stop it around the 46 yard line of the of the Indians. So Hillers will take over a very good field position with 7:10 to go in the second quarter. This is a perfect opportunity to um, kind of get a score here. You had a you know they stopped you, then you stopped them on the three and one, uh, three and out, and now the Hillers are getting the ball back inside Dartmouth's uh, territory. So this is a perfect time to put together a little drive. There's plenty of time left, and get on the scoreboard. You know, Don, the games we've done here, it it, it seems like are we the only team that can throw? <laughs> we haven't the last two weeks, it, um, yeah, yeah, didn't even Holliston didn't, didn't really throw, throw that much. No, Westwood and Medway couldn't really throw mm -hmm. too well. 
I think that's a problem in America <laughs> right now that there's not enough good quarterbacks. Look at the NFL. Quick pass to Lindquist, who's not going to go down too easy, and he picks up about about four or five on the play. That quick little little hook right there, Don. Yeah, I mean, that's been open. That's at least Lindquist's third or fourth uh, catch of the night already. So that looked like something that Sully and Coach Gerard had identified as a play that would be open. And it, it's almost a security blanket at this point with, for Ryan because it's, it's, it's always open and he's going for it. So we got a bunch set over here to the four receivers and, and Cooney to his – and it's going to be a, oh, it's going to be probably a double pass. Abbott is going to throw the ball. And he overthrew. And Linquist, who was wide open at the 10-yard line, he overthrew him. Yeah, that was, uh, oh, boy, Luke. Gosh, he was all excited. He did the double hop and everything. That was uh, well scripted. Um, you know, what was unusual about that is the way, because Luke kind of had to no, that turn was, uh, around. That was Abbott. Oh, Abbott threw that? Abbott. I thought that was Deloitte that threw sure that. I'm pretty sure it was number two Abbott that threw, that threw that. And we got no replay. I don't know. We don't have any replay. But whoever threw it, they overthrew it by a couple feet, and uh, the receiver was wide open. And that's that's unfortunate, but kudos to uh, Coach Sully for trying to pull that out of the playbook there. So we got uh, trips left. Frank leading. Kelleher throws to the right. He's got – no, he's overthrew uh, Cooney. Maybe led him too far to the sideline. And uh, it falls incomplete, and it'll bring up fourth and about six. You know, this is one thing that you have not seen from the Hillers a lot is, is missing open receivers. Whether, you know, Kelleher has been the one that's throwing it mostly. I think that was a, only the second double pass we've seen. Um, and we didn't see the first one because <laughs> we weren't there. But – um, Kelleher doesn't miss very many open receivers, but it is something here, Rick, to note that our, our receivers are getting behind their defense. And uh, a slight bobble on the, on the punt, and he drops it around the 15-yard line, but he falls right on it. I don't know who is uh, feeling that punt. It could have been Tisdale. So they'll pick up uh, – the Indians will start from their own end at the 15-yard line with 6.08 to go in the second quarter. I'm going to say offensively, I mean, how many first downs do we have? We've, we've got we've got a few. We've got, I mean, a, we've got a bunch, yeah. and, and they have maybe one or two. So, I mean, we're, uh, the Hillers are controlling this game offensively. So what do we have? We have uh, two running backs, three running backs in the, well, call it a pistol split, I guess. T Tisdale gets about two on the play. Number 16 seems to be... Luke Tisdell seems to be the feature running back here, and they'll just pound it up the middle with him. Yeah, he's not getting much. I mean, there's no holes, no alleys. The Hiller defensive line is holding strong. Uh, Freen is coming up and sticking people as normal. So um, there has not been a lot of running room thus far for Dartmouth. So I don't uh, – maybe they didn't see the film last week because this is the same – seems to be the same thing going on, pound it up the middle, get nothing. They, 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 <laughs> do they have tried more passes than Pembroke has. So we get uh, the formations look a little bit more well, a little more spread out than yeah. than Pembroke. But T Tisdell tries to come up the cut it out to the right side, but he doesn't get much, and it's going to bring up about third and seven. Yeah, you had um, you had uh, Connor Hebert there. You had Cousins in the mix. Um, really, there was you know nowhere to go for the Dartmouth runner. So it's going to be. Uh, We've fallen under five minutes in the second quarter. We got third and about seven. And they're spread out. Ellis in the shotgun. And he's going to throw. And he's going to throw. And it's picked oh. off by Cooney. Cooney's going to bring it in. It's a 20 yard return and a touchdown for Shane Cooney, who picks off. He picks off Nate Ellis at the 20, runs it all the way back. The Hillers will go up six to nothing. What a huge play right there by Shane. You know, he, that was well covered. He was standing in front, and I kind of had referenced this quarterback. It almost looks like he's just 
Maybe it's just the way he throws the ball, but it looks like he's just flinging that thing. I, he wasn't even looking out here. He was looking one way and then just flung it left, and Cootie was just standing right there and said, thank you very much, I'll take this for six. Yeah, so at 4.33 of the second quarter, the Hillers go up six. Pekliuka with the kick, and it might have squeezed through. No, it didn't, it stayed low. So it will come off field with 4.33 to go. The Hills will be up 6-0 on the Cooney interception. Yeah, and I'm not sure if that was a bad snap, uh, but it looked like it, it came off uh, Pugli, uh, Puglieri's uh, <laughs> toe. Pagluca's toe. Kind of wrong there. So that was a, that was a tough break for the Hiller uh, special teams. But what a huge play for Shane Cooney in the defense, bringing it up and 6-0 uh, now. And, and just watching this Dartmouth, you know, uh, it doesn't look like they have an offense built to built to come back from a two or three touchdown deficit. So the Hillers just need to keep the pressure on here. Yeah, you know, and it, and it kind of goes through. I think you have, you know, this team made it into the playoffs as well at three and four. I, I know they play a tougher schedule and whatnot, but you know, there's a reason why they're three and four. And and, and looking at the offense. It's not much imagination to the offense. No. And, and I know their quarterback got hurt. I, you know, their starting quarterback is a senior, the brother to current quarterback uh, uh, Nolan Ellis, uh, Nate Ellis, got hurt earlier in the year. So it's not maybe going quite the way they want it, but there's still not a lot of imagination to this offense. No, and I can't really say that they're any more bigger, faster, stronger than the Hillers are. I mean, they're not, they're not pushing us around by any means. So, so the line drive kick is fielded on the up man and he comes into the middle of the field and he gets out to about the 35 yard line puts his head down and tackled by number 45 ryan brown you know that was the first time that almost looked like a squib kick by design there by kelly because he can kick it deep and he just kind of punched that down there and the dartmouth kid made a nice play to, to grab that and uh took it up for what he could but again the hiller kickoff coverage has been strong at least every game i've seen yeah so Ellis in the shotgun, and I don't know who's behind him. It's not it's not Tyndale, and he hands off to the to the back, and he goes up the middle, and he gets zero. <laughs> yeah, it was stacked up pretty well there. Um, you know, you had the Brown, you had Linquist in there, your 52 Alex McDonald. You know, again with this defense, you always see five six seven eight white helmets to the ball so it's sometimes it's hard to see who's making the tackle because so many of them are in there let's call it green jerseys because we have a lot of white helmets out in the oh, field all right tonight. there we go all right green <laughs> jerseys so they got the triple backfield it's a i'll call it a split pistol second and about nine and he's gonna throw and it's a quick pass and it's picked is it not picked off it was Ionelli on the coverage, but with the bad hand, he may not be able to catch. Yeah, Ionelli's got a bad uh, a bad thumb, it looks like, but uh, that was a, that was just a poor throw by the quarterback. I mean, that kid was open, um, and he kind of threw it low, and Ionelli made a, a nice attempt at the interception. So that brings up uh, a third and a long eight, nine. And they're in the pistol, shotgun. Two receivers, two receivers to the left. And he's going to throw. No, it's a quarterback draw by design, and he's not going to get the first down. He's taken down by number three, Matt Lindquist. Um, the Hiller defense, one of their strengths, other than the speed, is their discipline. You know, they don't move out of their, their assignment. They hold their gaps, so it's very difficult to trick them, uh, and a draw play is not going to work. So the draw play picked up about four, fourth and five from the 40-yard line, and the Indians will punt. Tisdell with the kick, he gets it up high, but not very deep, and he gets a bad bounce, and it's it's down around the 47-yard line of the Hillers. So with great field position, 2.53 to go in the half, the Hillers can mount the drive pretty easily with this much time. It wasn't a bad punt. It was actually a pretty good punt, and uh, it took a horrible bounce for Dartmouth. Bounced right in number 70's hands. He looked like he hadn't seen a football since 
since he was in Pop Warner or something. And uh, Well, he was trying to play goalie. That thing came back at him. He was trying to stop it, kill it, hit it, do anything with it. He just didn't know. You're right. He hasn't had too many in his belly, no. I can tell you that. Nope. But, yeah, this is an opportunity here to kind of give some breathing room going into halftime. The Hillers can put something together here. So they spread it out with three to the left, two to the right. And it's a quick pass to, oh, and it hit, it hit Lindquist right in the, in the belly area, and he dropped it. They had two guys on him there, so Dartmouth may be tuning into that play because um, he was covered, although it looked like he could have made that made that catch and just kind of bounced off his hands there. So second and ten. It's so only three seconds off the clock on that play. Second and ten from the 47-yard line. 2.50 to go to the half. And he's got uh, three to the left. Ebert in the backfield with him. Link was tight. And he hands off, and it might be one of these. No, it's a fake, and Connie Hebert gets the corner, but not much. Oh, and that's going to be maybe a little extra, no? Well, he was still in bounds there. That If he was out of bounds and would have done that, that would have been a 15-yard. That's what the ref's saying. He's, he's telling Coach Gerard. He's saying his feet were still in bounds, which they were. And so, thus, you were able to tackle as hard as you want. Okay. So, although I didn't, I didn't like the, the body slam, per se, I, I think they were trying to get rid of that. But it's third and about three, long two. And it looked like they're going to set up that play, maybe pitch it out to Abbott uh, going the other way, maybe later on. But he Yeah, he, he kind of kept seven. that. Yeah, yeah he kind of kept that. And so, with uh, 2.14 to go. Frank to his right, he's rolling, he's rolling, he throws, and DeLoya with the catch, he gets the first down, down to the 35 yard line. The clock stops as they move the chains. That was an excellent throw uh, Ryan had on the run, and DeLoya went up and grabbed that. It looked like it was in between two defenders, made a nice catch, and then got another four yards off of that, kind of dove forward uh, on the tackle and got another four yards, so excellent play by the Hillers. So at the 35-yard line, clock running, 156 to go in the half. They break the huddle, and they have, and we're going to get a timeout. 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 Dart. Timeout Dartmouth, I believe. So, well, I, I think we've got all five left. No, I, I started to write them down. I know we took one over here to talk about an offensive play. Uh you know, they have plenty of timeouts. I'm sure they got four, maybe even, you know, at least three, maybe four left if they choose to use them. But with 152 at the 35-yard line, you're in a pretty good situation. I mean, you know, Hillers can play it any way you want. You know, you want to take a 25-yard pass, they can do that. They can kind of grind it out here. Um, there's plenty of time. So it's really the, the playbook is wide open for, for Coach Sullivan and Coach Gerard. And you got, what else you got? You got uh, Coach Dave Swanton, a Hall of Famer down at Stonehill. You've got um, Coach McLean, who came over from Bellingham. Uh, he was Bellingham head coach back in the, back in the day when our kids played. And uh, he's made a, a, a great job on, as a defense coordinator for the Hillers. So he rolls left. He gets Cooney by himself out here. He throws it, and it's not caught. A little high, but he was starting to fall. Starting to slip a little bit and went off the fingertips. So that'll bring up second and 10 with 147 to go. Yeah, you know, if if Ryan would have held on to that ball maybe for another step or two and let Shane get a little bit of separation, could have happened, um, could have had that. But it looked like Shane was losing his feet right there and it was incomplete. But just back to the, you got Ted Wrigley as the uh, defensive line, offensive line, Jack Flynn, coaches the defensive backs. You got Brandon Anderson. Defensive backs and receivers. Um, famous Mark Sanborn, head and the head uh, freshman coach. And then Ed Flannery and Mike Webb also assist Coach Sanborn. A nice touch bunch set, and he's going to throw, and he's throwing deep, and he throws it deep, and it's going to be long. And that was from Mr. Abbott as he threw it out of the end zone. That's going to bring up third and ten. Yeah, that was pretty well covered there. They had a safety, and I think that – I don't think that was that Abbott. I think yeah. that was Deloya. Is that yeah. Abbott? That's Abbott. Okay. Um, they had a safety over the top there, and they had another kid running with him. And, and Ryan 
he, he kind of threw it where, you know, the best place he could, or that could have been picked off. So you'd like to see the Hillers do a little something here with the ball, Rick. Yeah, I mean, you gotta get. You want to see them get some yards so they don't get stuck with a fourth and ten. So they got uh, two receivers to each side with uh, Frank in the back. And he steps back to throw, and he's going to go straight up the middle, but he's going to get grabbed and sacked. It's going to be fourth and ten with 1.31 to go. And I'm not sure there's not going to be a timeout here by Dartmouth, maybe. No, they're going to let it run. I figure they probably, maybe they just feel 6 nothing is okay if they can keep it here. Well, I, I think so, yeah, because... Um it's not that's not surprising they're not calling a timeout here in fact the hillers will probably let it yeah, I run down and then call a timeout for themselves and to try to give them a little extra time here oh they might just yeah you mean to punt it well i don't know if they're gonna punt I it, mean, it otherwise you'd be just going right now why would you let it run run run? well no, to, so not to give them a lot of time when they get the ball back You know, because you, you still, if, yeah. if you get the first down, you still have enough time to get in the end zone. Here, you're going to go for it. Um, you might as well um, let some time, you know, run off the clock. But it could be interesting. He could, he could kind of, you know, kind of try and drop a coffin kick in here, which is something you never see at any level of football anymore. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm just get, you know, thinking about what you just said. They're at the 35-yard line. I, I don't. There's nothing on the Dartmouth offense that tells me boy give him the ball and they're going to score in right. a minute so you might as well just go for it and let your defense just kind of run it out on the other end uh, I, I think they're going to go for this uh, it doesn't look to me well where's kelly at he's not anywhere near the oh he's standing there so he's listening sully's talking too much though i think this is going to be an offensive they're going for it here on fourth down So you, you got nothing to lose. Like, like I said, the, the, the Dartmouth offense is maybe a little less anemic than Pembroke's was, but uh, it's still not a, a high-powered, any kind of threatening kind of offense. No, I don't see any anybody with, uh, and starting with the quarterback, that, that scares me out there offensively. And it's funny, they play pretty well defensively too, so yes. you, you would think it, would, it, it could translate to the offensive side. I don't, you know, it looks like they have a little bit of size. Where's that number 10? I don't see him. He could be in the... It looked like he had some size, but I don't see much of him. So it's fourth down with uh, two receivers each side. Frank, he steps, drops back to pass. He's throwing deep again to Abbott. That's interference. That's interference. Throw that flag. There it comes. Yeah. But that's, a, that's only a 15-yard penalty in high school, so it'll bring it to the 20-yard line. That's, a, you know, that's the right play to do in high school, if you, if you beat, or in college for that matter. It's, if you beat, just tackle them, do whatever you can. Yeah, I, I'm not, I, the kid wasn't that beat. So, you know, if he would have just turned around, he would have seen that that ball was, was almost not catchable because it was over his head pretty well. Um, but it was a clear interference, and... Here the Hillers are, uh, you know, in business. Should be first and ten. Where are they putting it here? Well, that's where the original yeah, spot I was. Gonna say. I don't. They putting it down on the twenty? No. Oh, what was there? A penalty on a, another penalty? Wait, what? There must have been two penalties on the play. The offset. There had to be offsetting penalties, Don, because they're, okay. they're replaying fourth down, and it's at the thirty-five. And he's going to be back to pass, and he's going to run. No, he's going to throw, and he's, he's got – no, he was Ooh. down. I think – Will Abbott was down. Uh, you know, that was, that, was, that was a great play. Three players there. You had Kelleher, obviously, um, you know, took the snap, kind of moved around a little bit, stepped up. Zach Frank, number 21, threw a really nice block to give him another – couple seconds there to throw the ball then he threw it to abbott who was down on his knees stood up kind of twisted around made a great catch on his knees practically and uh, the hillers are in business 28 seconds left yeah there was a blitz coming from the from the right side of the offensive yeah, line frank it was picked, picked that up there was uh that was picked up uh, quite nicely but that brings us down to about the 12 yard line so it's 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 uh first and 10 with 28 seconds to go and he's going to throw. He's, he's back. He's rolling left. He's flushed. He's flushed. He's going to – he didn't get the first down, or he didn't get much. 
Come got, back maybe to the original line of scrimmage. He got crunched by number 68. That's what he got. <laughs> um, which is you got all, you know, you're going you're gonna to take it and run the ball. You've got to be careful with that, and um, especially when you're not sliding with your feet. And uh, Ryan took a hard hit there, but um, looks like he, they gave him about a half a yard. So a timeout on the field, 20 seconds to go. The ball's at about the, we'll call it the 10-yard line, a pickup of one. Second and nine. And this is where it gets a little interesting, right? I mean, you have you have a couple of timeouts to go, and uh, you can use you know you can use them to your discretion here, or you can call a couple of plays. You can do whatever. You might even yeah. There's plenty of time. There's still a lot. Of, field goal here, Don. There's still a lot. Of, there's there's um. Uh, do, do we know what are they? What are we figuring? They have at least two timeouts left. I think left? they probably get two. This is you know one or two left. Well, there's 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 enough time to you know you got you figure a play lasts usually seven eight seconds so you've got two or three plays whether it's a run or a pass so and you can technically still get a first down but not likely to happen and Ebert to Kelleher's left and it's handed to Hebert and he's gonna get oh it looked like he had a and he's at the He's very close. He probably got a first down, though. Gotta watch that clock. Well, it's the first down. The clock stops. It looked like he had the corner, and then all of a sudden somebody came up, and he had to cut it back in and then get very close. And he's first and goal at about the four, three. Oh, that was a new formation that we had there. You had, um, you kind of had Frank in that slot. Position yeah, been, where, they he, had, he, where they had, where they had. Yeah, without Ionelli though. Oh he's, yeah, there, he's, there you he's go. Be, okay. He's gonna be okay. In. Yep. There you go. Yeah, that's right, because that's where Ionelli would go. Okay. Um, and then Hebert kind of had the outside there. Um, Dartmouth, you know, had that covered, but uh, Connor made a nice cutback move and was able to get down there. And what are we at, Rick? The two, the three. Three. It looks like, uh, you know, Ben Aronson, the senior captain for Dartmouth, came up from somewhere in the uh, near the end zone and turn Ebert back in but uh, you got to figure you got to figure here what do you got one play two you got two, two well you got two you maybe got, three depending on how many timeouts you have you got um, I know but the, but the second one is either going to be a um, a field goal or you're going for it you know what I mean yeah so you got to whatever they do here if they don't get in here you're going to call a timeout you only have one one a time for one more play and he rolls, rolls, he throws, and it's caught. Who caught it? Lindquist? Looks like Lindquist got the ball. Yeah, uh, it looks like it could be Lindquist, yes. But they went back to that play that, again, it's it just almost like an automatic. You know, their Kelleher rolls out. They run a nice little four-yard out, and boom. Touchdown, Hillers. And they're going to go for two points here and try and give it a full touchdown. No, no, the caught it was three. Oh. He's got younger eyes, so listen to him. And he rolls for the two, and it's over. Who is it intended for, Don? That was intended for Abbott, and uh, it looked like that Dartmouth had that covered. You know, we've run it here four or five times, so Dartmouth had that covered. It was a big stop for them, but an even bigger six points for the Hillers. Yeah, so as we come back upfield with five seconds left, the Hillers lead 12 to nothing. With a Kelleher to Linquist corner of the end zone pass to put them up by two scores. So that, you know, we were talking about this last week. You get one touchdown, two is almost unsurmountable for an offense that you're playing across the uh, field. I, you know, I, last week's Pembroke offense was really, really bad. This um, Dartmouth offense looks like they have a little bit more talent, but the, the imagination and the play calling, I just haven't seen it. Um, they might have to pull out some sort of trick play or something to have a, a, a big uh, quick score here to get back in this game. So you got two, two deep backs. Tisdale is one of them, and it looks like Hunter Pimentel is the on the right side, and it's just kind of a squib kick. 
And it's a tough bounce. Oh, it's and fumble. It's, and it's fumble. Oh, my goodness. But there's one second on the clock. It, it, they may stop that, though. They may give the Hillers one second. They might. They're going to have to come back and see what's going on. I think they should. We got this guy. We got the ref up here. He's telling them to put on two seconds. Yeah. That, two seconds on the yeah, clock. Yeah. Two, they definitely, Hillers are definitely going to get this ball. Um, and it's about the 30-yard line, somewhere around the 30. You know, it, it was a strange formation that they had. They, they had uh, almost seven guys up near the, like it was going to be an onside type of kick, and they had nobody really in the middle of the field. And the, uh, the player from the side beat the guy coming from the backside, yep. and it just started stumbling and bumbling all over. Like I said, the Hillers, they, they put on you know pretty much all their starters on that kickoff team. It's a pretty serious group of kids running down there, and uh, and that's a huge play. So uh, you got to figure we're going for the end zone here, yeah, Rick. Why unless not? This is, is a penalty. This will do it in a half. Kelleher with Frank to his left. He's just going to back the pass, and he's going to get – he throws it to – it was picked, it's picked off, but nothing really uh, going on there. So that's, uh, that'll end the half with the Hill is up 12 to nothing. We will be right back for the second half. That was a late. We have a special uh, special guest here up in the booth here at halftime as we end halftime uh, with the Hillers leading 12 nothing. We have Barrett Hanlon, who was a 2011 graduate star basketball player and football player for the Hillers, and it's always nice to see these kids come back and and support the the you know the kids that are playing right now and throwing on the green. Barrett, welcome back. I know you're oh, a big, uh, you're, you know, you're a big Hiller fan, and you. Thanks for coming out and supporting the team. I know it's hard to give up those Friday nights in Southie. It is absolutely tough to, to give up those those tough nights in Southie, but there's nowhere else I'd rather be than with Don Lehman, the best color commenter in the TVL, 
Thanks for having me. I don't I have enough wait. money to even pay you off to, to, tell, to have you say that, but I, I appreciate that. Oh, that was from the heart. Don't worry about it. That was straight from the heart. <laughs> Thanks, Bert. So this brings back, obviously, some good memories, and, it, and it's nice to see um, – the Hillers here going into uncharted territory, really, as, as good a teams as you guys had and we had seen before. This is the first time we've been playing in a playoff game this deep in the season. No, this is this is unbelievable. I've never seen this stadium rocking quite, quite the way it is right now. I haven't seen this many fans. Obviously, back in 2012 with the Cena, Hume, myself, we went 10-1, didn't even make the playoffs. Yep. These guys undefeated. It's truly unbelievable um, what this coaching staff has done what these players quarterback Kelleher Abbott these guys are pretty special dudes um, fun to watch and yeah I'm, I'm excited to be here this is great yeah it, it's really nice it, we, we, over the over the last couple games we've seen guys that have come back um, you know former players and and you guys have all played under coach Gerard and it's nice mm -hmm. seeing him have the kind of success that he's having you know he just had was uh, Patriots player uh, coach of the week last week he met Andre Tip at the whole 10 yards absolutely yeah he's I'll say this um, no disrespect to coach Keen my basketball coach in high school I would say coach Gerard is probably my top coach of all time well see now you're hurt for. Barrett now you're hurt my what about that Pop Warner coach, coach? Keen I hope you're not listening to this what about that Pop Warner coach you're probably you second what about that Pop Warner coach you had back in D's oh Donnie Lehman I completely forgot you're one of my coaches jeez um <laughs> So we got Don Lehman, of course, <laughs> as the god of coaches, and then we got Coach Gerard. Uh, but, I don't know about that, but um, but yeah, it's it's, um, it's really nice when you kids come back out here and support this team, and it's just going to get more and more fun. And just one thing that uh, we wanted, we we were kind of talking about, if if these guys keep winning, um, you know, we're going to come into a situation. They say we come out of this game win. Win next week, win the South, they're going to be in a situation where they might be playing Thanksgiving Day and they might be in a situation where you might want to sit some kids. Talk about what it means to play on Thanksgiving and how you, you, know, you would like to do that or would not like to do that. I know that's, that's a tough question and something I've never dealt with and neither the guys I played with back in high school. But um, obviously Thanksgiving game is something really special. Um, usually, or for me, it was our last game of the season. Last game of my career was Thanksgiving against Ashland, our rivals. Yep. So it was tough. Um, but these guys, I think, if they end up winning this game, um, knock on wood, they're looking good. Defense is looking good. Yep. Um, and they end up getting to the Super Bowl. I think you sit your your key guys, get more of even like a JV lineup in there, like. Who, who really, who really what, cares? It's the Super Bowl. Has, has Hoppington ever been to the Super Bowl? Never been to the Super Bowl. Well, one thing they're going to be carrying at that point is an undefeated season. So it's not like they're going to ah, want very to, good you know, plus these kids, you know, they got it. They, they kind of took a beating last year against Ashland on Thanksgiving Day. So it'll be interesting to see who's got the final call. Obviously, Coach Gerard will be, you know, he'll have the final call, but I could see some of these players saying, hey, Coach, you know, let me at least uh, smack around some clockers, at least in the first half. Absolutely. Okay, that, that might be the move. First half, get after it. Try to romp the score a little right. bit against those those clockers. They, they're nothing special over there from what I'm hearing. Um, no, they're out of the playoffs now. Um, you know, last week's game or last year's game, they they kind of took it to us. Got but you. Um, but uh, they um, last year's game, uh, you know, is a, is a, is a distant memory. And you know, Haley's comet comes through every once in a while. So I guess Ashland had to win that game. And uh, you know, this is a new year and, and certainly a new Hiller team. Absolutely. I'll tell you one thing: that new logo out in. 50 yard line that was good i didn't have that um when i was playing so that that, that logo good aesthetic for sure no that logo is a coach gerard actually brought that logo mm. um and now it's kind of he kind of had it as the hopkinton football logo and it's really kind of taken on as the hopkinton hiller logo because you know we had the the block age and we had the the kind of the batman age going on there yeah. for a little bit and uh no it, it's it's really that um it's a nice logo. They put it on all the sports. It's right in the middle of the field, which does look very nice, by the way. I don't think – I don't even remember you guys played on the field looking this nice. Do you? No, ab absolutely not. We had to cancel – I think it was our year or maybe the year after. We, they had to cancel a game we had Norton. Of the, the flooding. With Norton, remember we played in the uh, – it was, a, it was a, I think it was the Norton game. 
But listen, you got you got, you got, you got Ricky Decina here, and oh, and we got we got to put Decina on the, on the microphone. He doesn't want to lose his job. Send your resume though, Barrett, in to to H Cam. Barrett Hanlon, uh, past uh, 2000. And Alex Hume. And Alex Hume, but Alex. Uh, Alex but, is but more, he was behind, he yeah, was behind, behind the, the scenes. scenes. Only uh, Barrett uh, got on the uh, microphone here. I don't know what the conversation was all about, but uh, two graduates from the 2012 and the very successful 2011 team. You know what's uh, Barrett, tremendous athlete, tremendous oh, both those person. Boys. Both those boys, great athletes, great kids. Yes. Um, and, and you know what's nice is is these kids, you know, our you know our kids and the and the kids that came through in 2005, 2006, 12, 11, you know, they they come out to these games. If they're still living in town, um, they'll come out and check out these games. The Hiller football is important to them, and you know this is uh, turning out to be a real historic type of team. So. The whole town's behind these kids, and, you know, let's finish this game strong right here. Yeah, so uh, Dartmouth very laid out into the field. Uh, maybe you're getting a little bit of a, a chewing out. Who knows? But uh, some motivational tactics possibly. But uh, this is what they didn't do at the end of the half, the way the Hillers are fo uh, in formation now. And uh, that's why they lost that ball. But Average got it, and he cuts up to the right, and he turns it on, and he's going to get to the corner. And he's out of bounds at about the 45-yard line of the Hillers. Great return by Will Abbott. The Hillers set up a nice return wall there, and uh, Will took it up. He was kind of holding the ball out there a little, a little wide, but um, you know he, uh, he he shows some speed to the outside, and the Hillers are in business here. Oh, Will Abbott showed some speed out to the outside. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of redundant. Wow, that, was, that was kind of surprise. Redundant. Okay, so Will. Uh, Set it up at the 45-yard line in the Hillers. Ebert to the left of Kelleher, three receivers to the left. And it's a quick pitch out to Ebert, and he cuts it back up, and he's going to get swallowed up. No, he, he, he squeezes through for about two on the play, Don. Yeah, Stuckel, number 55, he's the either right or left guard, but he had a nice kickout block there, and Connor came right off his butt and um, turned it up for, for a strong three-yard run. So that brings up second and about seven on the play. And uh, they're calling in the huddle, calling their plays, getting everything ready to go. And they break with... Yeah, two receivers to the right with Linquist tight right. And it's another quick pitch out to Ebert, and he's going to get a little more. Number eight comes up, and he's going to be short of the first down by about a yard, but number eight, Owen McKenna on the tackle. Yeah, the line did a nice job there, and Connor tried to cut back to get a couple extra yards, and there was good pursuit by Dartmouth um, to shut that down. So we're looking at an early uh, third down here. This is, uh, we want to keep this drive going, trying to put the stake in Dartmouth's heart with a nice long drive here. Yeah, and it's an uphill climb for Dartmouth just based on their offensive performance in the first half. We have uh, two receivers to the right and left stack. And Frank leading the way, and he throws a quick pass, and it's bobbled by Linquist, who went down, and I went through. It went through Abbott's hands and a few other hands in the white jerseys, but it lands harmlessly out of bounds. Yeah, that was that just sprint right and uh, just a quick out there that the Hillers have been running. Um, Linquist uh, wasn't able to handle that, and it was lucky not to be picked off because you're right, Rick. It tipped off of his hands and went off uh, two other kids' hands too, including one Dartmouth kid. So not exactly what you're looking to, as you said, Don, you wanted to get a little bit of a, a drive, but a great punt by Kelly, fair caught at about the 10-yard line where the Indians will take over first and 10. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about there, Rick. Uh, we, I saw this a couple games ago. Why is that kid catching that ball? I mean, if I was coaching him, I'd, you just let it drop. It's, it's landing inside the five-yard line. You just let it drop and hopefully bounce in. What are, you, what are you getting there by catching him? Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, you're right. Otherwise, I mean, you know, it could be down at the five-yard line, too. But, uh, but just, your point well taken. Let it, give, let it a chance, give it a chance <laughs> to get into the end zone and uh, take it from there. 
So it's first and 10 with 9.14 to go in the third quarter. And that's that split pistol and the shotgun and it's pitched to number 16, Tisdale, and he's uh, gets back to the line of scrimmage maybe. Maybe he lost a one. Yeah, Abbott went up and made a nice hard tackle. I mean, the running back kind of, you know, kind of ran right at him, but uh, Will didn't back down, made a nice hard tackle. And, again, the Hiller defense is always in position. So we lost two. We'll give him a loss or two on the play, and they just can't get the, the, the running game going, and that's not going to support anything they're trying to do in the passing game that has been almost non-existent. So he's got three receivers to the left. And straight ahead to Tisdell, and he squirts out to about the 15, yeah, maybe the 13, 14 yard line, maybe. Looked like they had him bottled up there, then he did get loose, and uh, luckily he wasn't able to keep his feet because um, there wasn't anybody around him. He just kind of fell, fell to the ground there. So it's third, and about seven, 8.07 to go in the third. Ellis back in with the play as he uh, went to the sideline for the play. So we have, uh, call it the, the split pistol. And everybody in the hill of defense is within seven yards of the line of scrimmage. He dumps it off and it's not, not picked off. It's complete, but he's short of the first down, I believe. He's going to be tackled at about the 18-yard line, Don. This quarterback, who, again, you know, I had referenced his height, which I know is a sensitive <laughs> subject up here, but um, it, it really just looks like this kid's winging it. I mean, he almost looks kind of has a backyard feel to the way he plays and the way he throws. I mean, there, that kid was not open. I don't know why he <laughs> threw the ball. He had three guys around him. He was lucky to have it completed. And uh, now this is a tough situation. Uh, maybe we kind of rush this here. And the punt nope. is is off. Abbott's going to be oh, he's going to fair catch it at the 47-yard line. So they pick up same field position they had when they returned the kick. Maybe picked up three on the uh, on the punt. That was a nice punt. That was a uh, you know back kind of right against his end zone. That was a good 48-yard uh, punt. Will really didn't have much of a of an option other than fair catching it. And he did a good job there because you don't want to let that thing bounce and, and lose any more yardage. So That's what business. they weren't doing last week, Don. Right. Or, you know, the last few games that we've been watching, the, the punts have been landing on the ground and then right. taking bad bounces. And quick pitch to Everett, and he's bottled up in the middle of the field, gets to about the 50-yard line. Now the defensive line for Dartmouth um, seems to be playing pretty tough, number 74, number 75. The Hillers aren't getting a tremendous push. Connors is able to get what he can there in between the tackles. And uh, he got second and eight at the 50. So sec Folks, can you sit down so the referee can see the scoreboard, please? So we have a second and eight. Kelleher pitches to Ebert, and he gets through the first level, and he's not able to get too far out to the south side, but he, he turns it up to the 45-yard line of the Indians, and it'll be about third and three. Yeah, Connor was really moving his feet there because he was stopped uh, almost for no gain, then he kind of kept his feet churning and uh, grabbed another couple yards to make it you know, third and uh, they're saying three, but I'm going to say it might be a little more, three and a half maybe, but certainly manageable. Absolutely. Ebert comes into the game as the leading rusher for Hopkinton by far. He has 81 carries for 285 yards, not including tonight, three and a half yard average. And it's a quick turn to Ebert, and he doesn't get another yard. He's tackled at the 45-yard line. And number 56 on the tackle being... Nick Pittman on the tackle. That was a slow developing um, reverse of try to kind of run that a little bit. Um, even if they would have handed it to to, um, to Abbott, that, that would have been a, an even a bigger loss. So uh, Dartmouth had that covered right off the bat. Brendan Kelly with the kick, a bit of a shank, wobbly, and it's 
And it's a caught at the fair caught at the 20 yard line by number 16, Tisdell, the main ball carrier for the Indians. He uh, does it all for them. He, he punts, he kickoffs, receives punts, he runs the ball. Maybe we'll see him throw the ball tonight, kind of Don. One man. Well, you know, we, we kind of touched upon them needing some sort of spark, some sort of maybe it's a trick play because the whole, you know, short pass here, dive here is not going to get it done against the Hiller defense. You need a splash play. So they're in a shotgun, two receivers to each side. Tisdale in, in motion, fakes a jet sweep. And Ryan, uh, number 24, Matt Brown, on the sack. Yeah, Brown was all over that. Um, he, he wasn't blocked, and it, I wasn't sure if they were going to try and option him or what the story was, but he kind of, he was all over that play, and the quarterback had no chance. So a loss of six. No, more than that. Loss of about eight on the play. So we're going to call it second and about 18. 4.18 to go in the third quarter. Ellis in the shotgun, and he hands off to Tisdall, and he cuts out, and he breaks, and Matt, not Matt DeLoy, that would be Luke DeLoy on the tackle out to the 25-yard line. Tisdall finally got through. I think that was their longest run of the game thus far. Uh, they made it through the first level. Luke kind of got off of his block. He had a receiver try to block him. He got off of it and made a nice, nice tackle. Um, which if he wouldn't have made that, it could they could have broke it for even even longer. So this is a big third down if you're in the white uh, and a Dartmouth fan. Yeah, you know, Luke's going to be probably angry with me giving his tackle to his father. <laughs> I believe he would have ran right over Matt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's third. Matt's day's pass. Third and, third and about six, and it's going to be a pass, and he throws over the middle, and it's tipped, Ooh. and it falls incomplete. Pass intended for number 10, David Albonawara. And uh, that'll bring up fourth down in about six. You know, throwing the ball is a challenge here with these kids, I think, Rick. Um, I mean, number, this quarterback, he's a sophomore. He's not a big kid. Um, he's not particularly accurate with the ball. And um, they, uh, they have an uphill battle come, trying to come back against this Hopkins defense. So Tisdell with his heels on the 10-yard line. He's going to kick, and it's a decent kick, end over end. Abbott receives it. And, oh, he fumbles the ball, and I can't. It's a lot of action going on, a lot of bodies in there. Nobody's coming up. Nobody's, I'm guessing. And somebody, Hopkins got it. Number, number 24, Matt Brown, comes up with the ball. So a lucky break for the Hillers as they start the drive now at the 44-yard line. You know, I'm not I, – I think that, that Will was just surprised. He hasn't had many opportunities to return the ball, especially tonight. Um, so I think he was surprised to have that opportunity to return it, and he took it up, and he just kind of fell out of his hands. He yeah, wasn't really it looked hit. looked like number eight, Owen McKenna, might have got a hand in there to knock it out as he was trying to get by him. So we got a, a, stack, a stack to the right. And Abbott in motion, and it's just a jet sweep to Abbott, and he turns the corner, and oh, boy, if, if I don't know who made the tackle out there about nine yards downfield, but if he doesn't make it, Don, that looked like Abbott was going to be gone. Yeah, it's always exciting when Will has the ball in his hands, and he kind of got that on a little jet sweep, took it up, cut it up, made a nice cut back to the inside, and yeah, you're right, that kid was hanging on for dear life, or that would have been a, that would have been a touchdown. Oh, so it was uh, a 10 yards, not nine yards, the first down. With 2.46 to go in the third. The Hillers got the first down at the 44-yard line of Dartmouth. And they have two receivers to the right, Linquist tight in an H-back set. And Abbott comes to the right, and he bounces it all the way outside. And he, he's still alive, and he brings it down to about the 29-yard line. Looked like he was going out of bounds, but he cut back in. And uh, we got a flag on the play. Could, it could be holding. It could it be holding, holding here. Yeah. yeah, it is holding. That's unfortunate because that was a good run. We we have uh, game day coordinator Scotty Mackin in the 
in the booth. And Scotty, you got to be happy with a uh, with a twelve nothing lead by the Hillers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. All right, we got right. the okay. That's confirmation right there. And yeah, he's got a lot of activities going on. Uh, Dame as a game day coordinator, a lot of times he's got the crowd going. He's got. Well, I saw him down the there sideline. before. You got to get the crowd because there's no band here tonight, Scotty. Yeah. So you need to be even more rowdy out there and get the kids going. All right. The right. whole business play of football. Everybody's got to raise their game, and when it's the playoffs, and, everyone has to and, raise their and, game, including us. And and, and that's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're starting at such a high level. Yeah. That's not easy to do because you know. <laughs> What are you going to do, right? I mean, with our pay grade, I think we're doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> doing all right. <laughs> yeah. So we got uh, first and about 20 from the 44-yard line. And he's under center, and it's a quick jet sweep to Abbott, and he cuts straight up the middle, and he gets a good chunk of that back. He picks up nine as he cuts straight up. Yeah, they're getting the ball in Will's hands um, on the run more than they have in the past here. You know, I think that uh, Dartmouth is, is doing a good job trying to keep Will from burning them deep, and then the Hopkinton game plan kind of changes, and they're saying, okay, well, we want to still get the ball in the hands of number two, and they're doing a good job doing so. So he's back on the center, two plays in a row. He got tight wings with a... Abbott, and it's again the jet, one. and he's got that ball out, Don, on the inside, and it's, I just don't like the way he carries that ball loose like that out yeah, there. Yeah, he, he carries it like a loaf of bread, um, and, you know, we've kind of alluded that, to that before, and I can guarantee you that Coach Gerard has talked to him about it before, but, uh, you know, sometimes your just instincts take over, and, you know, Will's thinking about more about running than he is holding on to the football. And we got third in about... We'll call it a long, a long seven, maybe eight, with uh, 107 to go in the third quarter. We got uh, a trip stack to the right, Cooney to the left, and he's rolling to his right, and nice block by Frank, Linkless. and he throws, and, and it's Linquist. Linquist on the catch down at the... 22 yard line as he went up to get it and landed just in bounds. Yeah, they had this stacked, uh, this little stacked set they had with the receivers, and they all kind of ran outs. One of them cut in. Linquist was really wide open. Kelleher did a nice job rolling out, which he does throw well on the run, said many times, and put it, put it right on the numbers for a, a nice, nice first down by the Hillers. And Zach Frank. Did a nice job uh, on a on a trailing defensive end. I think it was number 75. He actually peeled off and and allowed Kelleher to get to the uh, roll to the right. Yeah, Frank Frank's a heck of a blocker, and he's not a big kid. But he, I'll tell you what, he'll stick his nose in there and, and nail you. There we, Abbott in the jet sweep motion, and he has the ball, and he cuts right up the off tackle outside, and he picks up about three on the play. Well, I, I, if you um, if they run that again and Ryan just fakes at the will, it's wide open. There was nobody on that side of the ball there, and Kelleher. There might have been one cornerback over there that Kelleher could probably probably get by. Well, so. he could probably throw it coming back the other way, and that's going to do it for the third quarter. So as we head back upfield, the Hill is on the march. And they're up 12 to nothing. And he'll have the ball when they start up around the 20-yard line moving in. Right now, we are about to announce the winning tickets for the 50-50 raffle. They're going to be, they're gonna be uh, doing the 50-50 raffle here. Did you buy any tickets, Rick? You got to you gotta play to win. You got to play to win. That's right. And I uh, I did not. I so we have some, uh, you know, with the with Barrett Hanlon and, and Alex Hume here in the booth earlier, we have some uh, a list of players that are active. Barrett played basketball at Salve Regina. Yep. And, and Alex, Alex Hume had a record-setting career as a receiver. Alex Hume is still playing. Salve, Alex Hume's still playing football at Salve Regina. But some of the guys we have: uh, Patrick Ryan playing at Union. Hayden Pereira at Salve, Jack Gulfi at Salve, Nick Pellucci transferred to Salve, Jake Kelleher, the brother of quarterback Ryan Kelleher, 
at Salve. Nick Canal playing at Cornell. Josh Sokol at Sacred Heart. <laughs> Sam Lehman at Stonehill. Isaac Stilwell, Worcester Polytech. Jimmy Adams at Hobart. Tim McGrath, Curry, and Nick Stanley, Salve, Virginia. Regina. So here we go at the start of the fourth quarter. It's a quick pitch out to Abbott, who was in the backfield. He turns direction, and he's got the left corner, and he's got a great block out there by, by Cooney, but uh, number 17, who he was blocking, ultimately made the tackle, Dane Ashton. Yeah, I think Cooney almost held up there for a second because he thought he was blocking him in the back. Well, he and had so, the block for so long, Don. Yeah. He was like, you know, hurry up, Will. Get over here. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Um, so that was that was lucky he, he didn't get he didn't get a penalty there. But just a quick shout out to all those players uh, still playing the game at the college level, uh, and it and what it is is a um, it's a it's really a testament to the coaching staff and Gerard here. Um, Coach Gerard, you know he really instills a love for the game, and that's you need to have a love for the game to keep playing it in college, and you also have to have a skill set, obviously. Okay, so it's uh, down at the about the 10 yard line, first and 10. And Ebert straight up the middle, and he's going to get it to about the five yard line. They can still get a first down at about the two yard line. So it's going to be second and down and about five. Yeah, you had Cooney kind of crossing there. Um, it looked like some kind of misdirection, and then they handed it to Connor right up the gut. And uh, Hillers are in, in, in really looking to put the uh, the touchdown that will that will really end this game. I think if they can get in here, he's got trips left with the Linquist as an H back. Kelleher hands off to Ebert, and he's kind of just following the guys, and he's not quite in. So he got it down probably about to the three yard line, somewhere in that vicinity. The clock runs, 9.35 to go in the fourth. It's absolutely no hurry here. You know, you're up 12 nothing. You got nine minutes left in the game. You, you can still get a first down. Record's third and about two. So, uh, you know, you're taking as much time as you need here. No, Nobody's rushing. Nope. So third and one from about the four-yard line. And it's Frank. No. Is it Frank? No, it's Ebert to the left. Yep, he's yep Ebert team. to the left. And he cuts and he does. He, I think he got the first down, but I don't. He's not in the end zones. So it's going to be very close to a first down. And he was almost hit in the backfield. They had a, a go. Oh, they're calling it fourth down. Fourth down, down yep. Yeah. They, um. Connor was almost hitting the back row. They had a kid slicing in there. He got by that, but then there wasn't much of a hole, and he, he pushed forward as, as much as he could. And now you got fourth and uh, looks like a less than a yard. Oh, it's very, very short. I wonder if they'll come up on the center. and so It's uh, very short. They may come up on the center and just let the I haven't uh, seen it all year. Yeah. I mean, we haven't seen it hardly ever. Uh, uh, well, we, uh, Coach Gerard has put in formations where they have been under center. It looks like Kelleher is under center here. This is the first time I've seen it this year. What, him under center? Yep. No, no, he's been running up for, for a little bit this game. Kelleher? Yeah. Well, i got to tune in. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, you should, maybe you should watch the broadcast. <laughs> We don't have a touchdown, but I'm pretty sure we got a first down. That's a nice job by the line. I mean, when you you know when you got fourth and inches, you're just looking for the for the big uglies to kind of pull it together and and uh, and get his quarterback, get their quarterback a yard, and that's exactly what they did there. Yeah, especially the center. I mean, it, it's got to be an exchange and a fire off, and he's got to engage and. Move that man back. Yep, which, he, which Theo Cavallo, number 65, did a great job there. So, so now you got first and, yeah, you got plenty of time half here. Half a yard. You know? Half a yard, but you still want to, no, let's let the time yeah, go here. No, and right. if you don't get it, you don't panic, you can still, you know, hand it back again. So two wings with Ebert in the backfield and a straight ahead keeper. And he got the touchdown. Kelleher with a one-yard plunge to put the Hillers up 18 to nothing. Nice drive by the Hillers, Don. Yeah, they, they're, they're really starting to impose their will now. Um, Dartmouth is 
I think might be starting to think about the long bus ride home and uh, and, and the Hillers, that really was, uh, that, that put them in control of this game. And I would think they would go for two here, Rick. You know, who knows? Uh, might not be a bad idea to just kick an extra point um, because they have kind of struggled with that tonight. Yeah, you mean uh, a little practice kind of thing? Yeah, or? why not? I mean, uh, Pagliuca has been very strong all year, and uh, I think they've just, you know, they've had a little trouble, on, at least on that one kick. But I don't see them out here, so I would say they're going for two points. Yeah, I mean, that's a – And it's the right call as far as point-wise. They don't have, a, you know, a lot of practice time at the high school level, and special teams is probably the piece that gets – you know, even though it's a very important part of the game, mm -hmm. probably doesn't get practiced quite enough as they need to have. But he's um, he's been you know pretty much spot on all all year. And you know we don't we can't necessarily see it could have been a bad snap, could have been you know that kind of yeah. Thing. It's so, it's hard to tell. It was hard to tell for sure. So we bring it up field with 7:30 to go. Kelleher. You know what I'd like to see now. Now now that we do have a little breathing room. I mean I'm not normally one to count your chickens but i'm going to try and go on twitter here while we're on here and see if we can get any scores because what do we got after this we've it's, got it's milton. milton the winner of the milton game would come here we have any scores i from don't so here we go going for they two the under center and he's going to throw it's the lawyer in the corner and it's Caught. Yes. Good. I think that's the lawyer in the that far the corner. Yep. Kelleher rolled out, hit him. So that brings us to 20 to nothing with a two point from Kelleher to the lawyer. Yeah, uh, again, Ryan, Ryan kind of rolled out there. Luke ran a nice pattern to the back corner of the end zone. He was kind of covered, um, but, but uh, you know, Kelleher threw a beautiful pass. Luke went up there and grabbed it uh, for an easy two points. So we come up field with 7.30 to go in the fourth quarter. As Don said, we'll call it the dagger into the, the playoff season for, for Dartmouth. Yeah, and it's hard. It's kind of hard to look at Twitter here while we're doing while we're doing the game. So I, I don't really know well, who we got to, in here. You have to know here. how to use it first. That, of all, this you, is true. When you, when you're looking this at something, it, it helps. This is true. You know, on social media. I'm just coming along with it. You know, you got your face page and stuff going, right? <laughs> right. Uh, face. Snap this, face. Snap face. As, as Coach Belichick will enlighten us from time to time. So that was a, a squib kick that was fielded by number looked like number 28, Ethan. Almeida, the sophomore, and he brings it up to about the 34-yard line. Okay, so you've got uh, you got 7:24 left. It's 20 to nothing. Um, you know we've had some blowouts here by these Hillers, and we've talked about when you get some of your twos in there. Yeah. You know, I, uh, you, you, you want you know you don't want to play scared and, and play worried about injuries, but sometimes it might not be hard. Too much a bad thing to get some of these kids off the field here. Sure. Yeah. No, it's. Uh, I don't know who that was. Especially Ainelli. Ainelli maybe with that cast, maybe get him off. I don't know. You know, you don't want to give them any momentum. They still have enough time to get three three scores. So let's see, I guess, how this drive goes. Yep. But, uh, you know, now we're, we're winning this game here, Rick. Um, we're certainly going into some uncharted territory here, playing for the South Sectional Championship next week. That's that's correct. Oh, it's fun stuff, man. So uh, that was Pimentel on the last carry, picked up one, second and nine. And a quick throw that was oh. picked by Nick, by Luke DeLoyer, uh, and he. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah, baby. He took it right off of him. Yeah. He caught that. He caught that. And again, I don't have replay, but from here it looked like he caught it. The lawyer ripped it out of his hands like he was grabbing a loaf of bread on the way out the door and took it uh, for a pick for six for a touchdown. Luke DeLoya having a night tonight, Rick. Yeah, and I just gave his pick to his brother Nick, so I haven't really given him any love tonight, right? I, I, I'm pretty sure I said Nick DeLoya on the interception, so. Maybe. Luke, I'm sorry. If you're gonna, if you're going to listen to this thing, I'm sorry. Luke, as, as uh, Coach Lehman just said, you're having a whale of a game. Oh, yeah, he's doing a great job. Um, and, again, I'd, I, I'm looking forward to seeing that play again because I, I think he ripped it right out of his hands. 
Pack Luca with the kick, and that looks good, and it is, and it's going to make it 27 to nothing. All right, so now, Rick, I think now's the time maybe get some of these kids out of there. You know, I mean, let's. Well, we're going to find out, aren't we? Yeah, and it's easy, you know. I don't want to sit here and do do the coaching and the and do the, you know, do do the substituting up here in the booth. But you know, it's just something you're always kind of thinking about, and you know, you want to. We've had knock on wood, very good luck with injuries this year, and uh, you know, we've still, you still got a lot of football left the way this season's going. So you want to keep everybody healthy. Absolutely, and. Uh, you know, it's just a, you might want to even to follow that a little bit. You give a, some of those kids a little bit of experience, right? I mean, you, you got a senior-laden team. Yep. And you're going to lose certainly on the skill side, maybe not so much in the line, but uh, maybe bring some of those other kids along a little bit. I know they do sprinkle in occasionally, sometimes in blowout, sometimes in in uh, the course of a game. But uh, another squib kick that bounces to. Tisdale, Tisdale, and he gets up to the 39-yard line where the Dartmouth Indians will take over first and 10. Yeah, it seems to be a strategy on these last two kickoffs, Rick. They're, you know, they're not kicking it deep. They're bouncing it around, letting the time, you know, take a little bit more time to field it, making it a little bit more difficult to field it. And, uh, you know, you're kind of giving up some good field position. So you're seeing a few substitutions here. Okay, yeah, there you go. And number 13, uh, Zachary Fisher comes in as the corner, and I see number nine, Karen Kerr. And we got a flag on the play, and Tisdale nowhere. Oh, oh. That, should be a, that should be a personal foul right there. Number 17 just went up and clocked Canal. Canal was, which you, got, you can't be standing there watching the <laughs> play not, either. I don't know if that was a personal foul. Yeah. You, got him, you got him on the front side. He and did, he did, and I guess, you know, that's, that's it's offsides, Hillers. Yeah. Uh, that's something. He'll learn. That He'll learn. That won't He's, happen again. No, <laughs> and, you know, uh, Canal has played some good ball for these uh, for this team, especially earlier in the year, and, you know, you never want to be standing there watching the play happen when you're on the football field because something like that can will happen to you. You get blasted. Tyler Doherty now on the defensive tackle, maybe? Are they uh, the Tyler's floor? probably in, I uh, can't really see. Yeah, I think it looks a right the, defensive tackle. Yeah. Yep. And we've got Canal over here at left uh, outside linebacker. Zach Frank is uh, playing linebacker as well. So he just hands it off to Tisdale, and he's zero yards. It's just, I'm just looking right here. There is, there is nine guys around that ball. Again, you're mixing in kids that you know haven't played. You got four or five non-starters there, um, and and they you know they still play the same kind of uh, defense with intensity. And Coach, <laughs> Coach Sherrod. Sherrod had something to say to oh, Tyler Doherty. Oh, that's great. I and love then, that. Oh, oh, now get God. back in there. <laughs> oh, my God. Coach Gerard brought Doherty all the way over, screamed at him, and said, look at that there. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, that's good stuff. <laughs> uh, so Tisdale again. Oh, jeez. Look at this. All 11 kids, all 11 Hillers are right there. Kyle Cousins, he has played, you know, without seeing. Oh, jeez, here we go. We're getting a little chippy here. Getting a little chippy. I'll, I'll tell you one thing we don't want here, Rick, is you do no, not want a kid a, thrown a out because he if he's thrown out here, he's thrown out for the next game. So let's keep your heads here, Hillers. So it's a personal foul on the on Dartmouth. It's uh, you're right. You, you don't want to see this at all. It's getting a little a little more one sided now, and it's probably frustration bubbling up now. Oh but, sure. But we just got to keep it intact. Yeah, but anyway, I'm. Kyle Cousins has played really well this year from the defensive tackle position. Um, seems to be making plays every game, you know, as a run stopper and as a pass rusher. Um, and, you know, hopefully, I'm sure a lot of these kids will get some recognition, some postseason recognition. But as a lineman, you don't hear his name called as much, but he's played really well all year. I, I, and I don't think we can, you know, we were saying earlier in the year that the defense was maybe flying under the radar. There is no way that this de defense is flying under the radar anymore. It, it's just two turnovers, pick six today. Ano likely, you know, I don't want to close the book on the game yet, likely another shutout. That would be two in the playoffs. I don't, you know, that's, you, 
I don't know what to say about it. I mean, it's uh, it's outstanding. It, you know, every, it's got to be some sort of historic thing going on. Every you know, every week we've been getting the stats, and you know, whether it's Abbott or you know Kelleher set a record here with touchdowns, and and you know, a lot of the records have come from the offensive side. Uh, this defense, I I don't I've never seen this many shutouts in a year. Well, the the, the thing about this defense is that at the games that we've done, mm -hmm. we call. We call uh, somebody's di somebody's name. It's different, right? Right. I mean, every, right. Every, every week, it's, every it's week. not one guy that's really okay. I, you know, I'm the guy. There's that, not you, one gonna... dominant defensive player on that defense. No, no and, there's and, not. And they, but they, they fly to the ball. They get to the ball. They make. And they're plays. always in position. They're they, always in. They always hold their gaps. They're never out of position. They don't get fooled, and they're fast. So, it's it's a really 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 impressive defense. And I don't, you know, I don't know how far back they go with records, but in terms of nothing, zero. And number 13, Zach Fisher on the tackle, he just held his ground and took him down. Yeah, he shed the block, uh, kind of had a low base there, made a nice tackle. But I don't know, like I was saying, I don't know how far back they go with, with defensive records. And I know when you played way back, and I'm, you know, football and hockey has been going on for almost 100 years. Yep. You know, it was the wing tee. You ran, ran. There was a lot of games was six to nothing. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you may you may be kind of riling that kind of scoring defense um, for the Hillers historically. Yeah, I mean, the, this is just modern day though. This you know, again, we kind of we're talking about it at first. You know, the fir your first thought about this team is, oh boy, they can score. You know, but the, really the backbone of this team has been their defense. And and credit to Coach McLean. And uh, just just really kind of brought this team together um, defensively, which was a struggle for them last year. They had a lot of games last year where they were kind of run over, and we have not seen that at all this year. And it's, it's fantastic to see. Yeah, and and you know we we talked a lot about the offense early on, but the offense itself hasn't scored more than twelve to fourteen points in the last three games. So right. it it's it really has been the defense. Um, that's really done it. All right, so we got a bunch of new yeah, kids we got, here. Yeah, we got a new quarterback in there, and number number eleven, Patrick Breton. Patrick Breton, you got um, you got number eighteen, Matt Laflash over here is a um, as a receiver. Looks like the, some of their line are still in. I see Cavallo. Looks like the the ones for the offensive line are still in. Uh, to give those kids a little protection. You got Zach Frank. Uh, looks like he might get a few more carries um, running here with uh, with the twos. You got Canal in. You got number 12, Brendan Kelly, the punter, running that uh, that wing spot. Yeah, he's been in, in and out all game. You know, with the INL, he's been a little bit of a cascade effect with people mm -hmm. coming and going. Pass right with the handoff to Zach Frank. Frank. He's stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Oh, look at this here. Right, uh, well, they, you know, these kids have to be careful. And, and, and I don't know, is that I and Ellie in the number nine? No, number nine, Karen. Kr Karen Her. Karen Her. You know, this number 17 kid here, he, he was the one that clocked uh, Canal when he was just standing there. Um, he's looking for to give a little business. So you can't get caught up in that. Let's just focus, run the play, get back to the huddle, and, and look forward to next week. There's no reason to, to get involved with any of this stuff that – Dartmouth is trying to pull here. So the quarterback, Patrick Brenton, the sophomore, 5'11", 155, not likely to throw the ball in this situation as we get to the, the three-minute mark of the fourth quarter, and the Hillers will move on to the Division IV South sectional final next week. And we don't know who they'll be playing, but since they are the highest seed, they'll be playing here at, oh, that's uh, a late hit. at Chick Wells Field, Dave Hughes Stadium. Uh, next Friday at 7 o'clock. So um, my call, or my, my thinking is it'll be Milton, who is uh, one of the stronger teams in Division Four yep. South, and, uh, you know, we'll likely see them here and, uh, you know, hopefully a, a competitive game. You know, we don't really, you know, we know Milton is good. They're the number two seed. We're the number one seed. You know, the early line out of Vegas is <laughs> going to be uh, Hillers. Hillers by, minus, by seven? Yeah, Hillers minus five and a half. All right. You get three points for the home field, and I'll give them two and a half. for Kelly gets the punt, and it's picked up by, no, not Tisdale, number 29, 
is Hunter Pimentel. And he's John, out of bounds. I think John Denver ran and played through that whole play. <laughs> <laughs> really, it's John so. Denver's been playing. Either that, either that, or it's just it's just going on <laughs> on my head the whole time. <laughs> I, I can't. I, I hear something, but I don't know what it is. You know, it was John Denver through that the but, whole point. But, uh, <laughs> but oftentimes when you're talking, I just hear you know music well, in the you, background too, right? Well, uh, yeah, you hope to. You hope to. That's how you block me out. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, you know, we're laughing up here at the expense <laughs> no, of Dartmouth. Easy. But, it's uh, easy to laugh when uh, you're up 27, 27 nothing. nothing. And the sophomore quarterback, Ellis, runs, and he's tackled by number 50. Is that number 52? Yeah. That's Farina. Oh, Farina's still in there. So they got a few of his uh, – yeah, I thought they might that. have been all out, but he's probably – he and Deloy are the only two I think that are – the, the the starters out there. Yeah, exactly. Well, you still got your right, defensive Ionelli's line. Out there. Yeah, Ionelli's Carson's out there. Carson's is out there. Yeah, hey, you still got some kids out there. It, you know, is it? Well, I guess it's not cold because sometimes you got to watch. It's tough when it's cold mm. to just throw a kid that's been standing yeah, there. Yeah. All, you know, yeah. get in there. Can't even so get sometimes, his on it, so. yeah, sometimes <laughs> you will see that. You know, no matter how close it is, if it's gotten to be too cold or whatnot, you don't throw the kids in there. And Pimentel, oh, hands off to Tisdale. I thought it was Pimentel, but it's uh, Ellis to Tisdell, and he gets well, probably the longest run he's had of the night. And he's down at the 41-yard 40, line of the Hillers. And I'm telling you, I, I, as much as this game's in control with one minute to go, I think they want to pitch the shutout, though. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's why I think that's why they're, they're keeping their, some of their players in there. And I, who can blame them? Yeah, that that's call it the, the split these throws and it's over high intended for number 14 Eric Vieira the sophomore so that'll bring up second and 10 with 44 seconds to go he does not throw that pretty of a ball that was a flutterer if it, it would have taken a nice pass to complete that because it was covered pretty well and then you had uh, you had Luke Deloya kind of holding up there. He, yeah, was, ready he, to he, he was ready to drill him. He, he could have come in, but he held up. Did a nice job. That's what you got to do in football nowadays. You know, back in the day, he would have lit him up like you read about. And Dizdell, nothing, maybe maybe two or three on the play. Can't see who's on the bottom of that pile. Looks like number, could have been Ionelli. So his uh, thumb is held up today. Oh, yeah. No, I think they could have probably had to take off his right hand. He still would have been out there. <laughs> so this will be likely the last play of the game. Ellis just hands off as a surprise. And Tisdale gets to the outside. And he's going to be taken down out of bounds. That should do it. So we'll recap as this game comes to an end. The Hill is a fine defensive stand in today's. Oh, it sounds like uh, I just heard Milton. Uh, maybe the. the that's what uh, they said. That's Milton? what he said. Bring on the okay. Milton Wildcats. All right. But we'll recap here. We had uh, in the first quarter. We had Cooney, a 20-yard interception return at 4:33 mark. A bad kick, six to nothing. Kelleher to Linquist with five seconds to go. A two-point conversion. Failed, made it 12 to nothing with 7.30 of the third quarter. Kelleher, one yard run, 18 to nothing. Kelleher to Deloya, 20 to nothing. And then to finish up the scoring in the fourth quarter at 6.40, Luke Deloya, a pick six. The kick good, made it 27 to nothing. Don, you got anything to say about uh, tonight and what might be coming on uh, next week? You know, Rick, I'll tell you, it, it really is exciting. You know, you come to the game, you're not sure what to expect because you don't know your opponent. You know the Hopkinton Hillers are good, but you're still not convinced how good are we. You know, what happens if we play a really good team, you know? Yeah. And, you, you know, you just don't know. So these kids keep every week, they keep standing up. Now we got big, bad Milton coming into the town. But you know what? I say bring them on. I will take this Hiller team. The way I've seen these kids play, I'll take my chances. When you can play solid defense, you've got speed, you've got a quarterback that can throw accurately, you've got some playmakers, you got a good coaching staff, you got a great crowd, you got grass. 
I say bring them out. Let's see what happens. And that's uh, that'll about do it tonight. Uh, for Tom Diggs, the director, John Ritz and Denise Antaki on camera. He's Don Lehman. I'm Rick DeSena. We'll see you next week.